Hi, everyone. My name is Edie, and I'm the Communications Director at Disability Rights Texas. Thanks for joining us for our second Facebook Live event here today. Um, before we get started, I um, want to remind everyone that Disability Rights Texas is currently conducting a community survey, and we want to know what is most important in the lives of people with disabilities. And so if you can take a few minutes to go to www.drtx.org slash survey and answer just a few questions. It takes just a few minutes. And if you complete the survey, you are at the end um, given a chance to enter to win a gift card. So that's a nice little bonus. But again, um, check out all the details at www.drtx.org slash survey. So let's get to today's topic. I'm excited to have Roberta Roque with us today from Disability Rights Texas. She is an advocate supervisor, has been on our staff for quite a while and has a lot of expertise and glad to have her here with us today. Um, today's topic is getting the job done, how to get supports and services from our state vocational rehab program. And since October is, na is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, we thought um, we would bring today's presentation for you. And in addition to two more presentations, the next two Wednesdays that will be related to uh, disability employment um, and because of the Awareness Month that we find ourselves in. So uh, look at our Facebook page for the details on those. Um, so many people with disabilities want to go to work, but they may have difficulties preparing for or finding employment. And to get assistance uh, they need uh, that leads to employment, they may need to get assistance from the vocational rehabilitation services that are offered in the state of Texas. And so today, Roberta Roque, as I said, is going to talk to us a little bit about that program here in Texas. She's going to give an overview of the program, uh, the services that they offer, and what process you go through to get help. Um, and she's also going to give a few examples of individuals who've received services, and then also what you can do if you're having problems um, during the process of working with the voca vocational rehab services in Texas. So I am going to let Ro take it away. Um, let's start off with basics. What is, we say the words vocational rehabilitation, and I think sometimes, and in the sh for short we say VR, but what is vocational rehabilitation? Yes, thanks Edie. Um, yes, vocational rehabilitation is often called VR for short, and it's a program that helps people with disabilities prepare for, find, or retain employment, and it can also help uh, youth and students prepare for post-secondary opportunities. Uh, the funding for vocational rehabilitation is an 80-20 federal state match. Now in Texas, VR services are provided through the Texas Workforce Solutions Vocational Rehabilitation Services Program. That's a long one, but it's TWS VRS for short. Okay. Uh, VR services for adults with disabilities uh, is when is offered when there's a barrier to employment and then the services are needed in order to achieve employment. Um, some of the services that are available could include vocational evaluations, counseling, guidance, training, educational assistance, assistive technology, job placement, and many more services, it really depends on the individual situation. Okay, well, what about, um, so you talked about adults with disabilities, what about youth and students with disabilities? Are there services that they provide for them? Absolutely, in fact, there's really quite an emphasis on youth with disabilities. Uh, the VR program provides pre-employment transition services to assist youth uh, to look at what's going to happen after they get out of high school with post-secondary education or employment opportunities. And um, again, there could be a level of job exploration, counseling, sometimes work-based learning experience, 
classes and training and again very individualized based on that student's needs. That's, that's great. So there's a lot for both adults and for students and youth. So if a person wants to get help, what's the process that a person needs to go through to get those services? Right. So if anyone is interested, the very first step is to contact your local Texas Workforce Solutions office and apply for services. Uh, an application for services needs to be completed within 30 calendar days of when you make that initial contact. Okay, that sounds good. And during that uh, application process, they will be gathering beginning information from you. So they're going to get your identifying information, they're going to get information about your disability, uh, and how that impacts employment. It also helps because they are um, gathering information to provide or bring with you to that appointment uh, some records to help things move along more quickly. So for example, you know, go with your photo ID, your social security card, if you have names of any of the doctors that you've seen, schools you've attended, any um, health care information that you have like Medicaid or Medicare, um, places that you may have worked, um, any medical reports or exams that you've had that are recent. So that will really, again, give them a good foundation to get started to look at your situation. Okay, so just really be prepared with a lot of information to get to them so that they can help you. That probably helps the process quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so you go through the process of applying and you provide records. What happens after that? What can a person expect? Right. So after they take the application and gather records, now the VR counselor has to review all of that to determine if you're actually eligible for their program. Um, that needs to take place on or before the 60th day of when you applied. So there are specific time frames to keep in mind so you're aware that things are moving along and you should never just you know, sit and wait if, if it doesn't seem to fall within that time frame. So, Ro, so you're saying that at this point, they have to have to do it within 60 days. That's correct. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so, then during that time, um, they should come to a decision on whether or not you are eligible for assistance. If they're not able to complete that determination within the 60 days, they can ask you for an extension of time, and it's up to you if you want to grant that or not. Following the eligibility decision, though, then the counselor will meet with you and develop a plan of service. So that is called in uh, VR the Individualized Plan for Employment, or IPE, and that needs to be developed then with you within 90 days after eligibility. And that is a mutual development process and it will list on the plan what your goal for work is, what are the specific services that you need, and then the time frames for when those services should take place. So, um, so it sounds like, you know, the, initially there's a timeline when you contact them as far as how long you have to then get your all your information in but then the VR uh, services have timelines to let you know about whether you're eligible and then from that point on to develop the plan so I think that's probably important for people to remember is to know the deadlines that the vocational rehab services have and to watch those closely um, so can you maybe give us some examples then, um, Ro, on how the VR program has helped some individuals? Sure. Um, it's very broad, but for example, we did talk about students and youth. So one example was a high school student who was deaf, and she received help over the summer from VR to explore what she wanted to do after graduation. Um, after going through that ex that exploration she chose a goal of becoming an accountant and she had applied and gotten into a state college program that offered that training and then VR wrote up a plan with her which included um, a, a tuition to help waiver to help pay for the expenses 
books, supplies, and interpreter services. So those were the needs that she had in order to complete that programming. Uh, another example was an individual who had been injured in a, a car accident and then now was using a, a wheelchair for mobility. And that gentleman um, couldn't go back. He had been a construction worker previously and now was not able to go back to that kind of employment. So VR helped him to explore what were some other um, job options. They looked at the possibility of utilization of assistive technology, uh, provided job placement assistance. It's like, you know, writing a new resume and how to interview because it had been a very long time since he had been through that process. And those services, you know, led to his employment. So I think that that's, those are really great examples because um, I don't think that a lot of people understand how much help VR services in Texas can provide. Um, so those are really great examples to kind of help people understand. Yeah. So let's say somebody is receiving services, mm -hmm. um, but they're having problems like with re but those deadlines we talked about, you know, the, the deadlines aren't being met and they're not getting back to you in a timely manner, or there's just some resistance to implementing some of the things that a person is on the person's plan. Right. What can a person do about something like that if they're having problems with the VR department? Good, good question. So VR certainly helps lots of people um, with their problems, but sometimes uh, there are issues in, uh, for the person that's trying to access those services. It could be something like you said, maybe getting help in a timely way. Maybe there's some disagreement about what the goal for work would be, or perhaps a specific service. So there is a process for addressing those problems internally within the VR agency, and that can be done on your own um, if you feel that you, you can, or if you feel like you need help. Um, for instance, our organization, Disability Rights Texas, can help through our client assistance program. So in that situation, one of our CAP advocates might uh, review your records, might attend a meeting with you, with the VR agency, and might help through the appeals process if, if, if needed. Um, if you have questions about VR services also generally, because sometimes you just don't understand what might be happening, mm -hmm. we can also just sort of help explain the process and the policies and the rules and regulations. And that can be done by calling us either at our toll-free number, which is 1-800-252-9108, or you can actually begin the process. You can go to our website at www.drtx.org and um, look at our employment section, and there's some resources there um, as well. Um, Ro, great, that's really great. Uh, thank you for providing this really important information uh, for people with disabilities in Texas. I think a lot of people don't understand uh, what is available to them, and then also how to navigate some of the complexities of you know using that service and maybe some of the obstacles they might come across. So thank you for that really great information. Um, I want to remind everyone that we have t several more lunch and learn uh, lunch and learns live lunch and learns in the next several Wednesdays. So check out our pay event page and find out more about that on Facebook. Um, I also don't want you to forget to please take a few minutes to fill out our survey, uh, community survey online. We want to know what is important to people with disabilities in Texas and what you think matters. So if you will go to drtx.org slash survey and take a few minutes to fill that out, that would be great. So thanks again, Ro, for your time today. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you.